Hello, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman from the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. I want to share with you now what I've got for you on this week's Torah portion. This week's Parsha, this week's Torah portion is called Parsha's Tetzaveh. And I'm going to share with you a nice insight from my commentary called Short and Sweet on the Parsha. Um, this one is on page 206. I'll share with you an insight, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So one of the things you're going to see in this week's Torah portion is that there's a mitzvah for the Jewish people to light the menaira in the Mishkan, the portable temple in the wilderness, in the Midbar, and in the Holy Temple. They're supposed to do it continuously, tamid, like uh, every day. And this is in the book of Shemois, the book of Exodus, chapter 27, verse 20. says, you shall command the children of Israel. They shall take for you pure olive oil. It should be kusis, which means pressed for illumination and to kindle a lamp continually. And that's what it's going on. So, so far, so good. So there is, um, I bring over here. In the, so up to there, that's just framing it. Now I bring in the safer in the, in the book. I bring a conversation that once happened between the Imre MS. The Imre MS was the Gerer Rebbe. He was the one of the first Ger Rebbes. Let's see, the Chedusha Rim, Sfas Emes. Imre Emes was the third Ger Rebbe. And he once had a conversation with Rav Chaim Brisker, famous, the world-famous Torah scholar. And this was their question pertaining to something that's in this week's Torah portion. The Medrash says in the Medrash Tan Choma, on this week's Torah portion, the Midrash says that the Menorah in the Holy Temple and in the Mishkan, it was lit from Rosh Hashanah until the next Rosh Hashanah. It's a Midrash in Medrash Tan Choma and this week's Torah portion under Ois Gimel, under letter 3, for those of you who like to look it up in its primary source. And the Midrash, and the Midrash says that it always remained lit. The Menorah was always lit and would not be extinguished until the following year. So it was like lit once in Rosh Hashanah and the last until Rosh Hashanah. From Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah, that Menaira was lit. Okay, so far so good. So the Imre MS asked of Chaim Brisker an obvious question. You see from this week's Torah portion that there's a mitzvah to light the Menaira each and every single day. So the question becomes, how could that halacha be observed if the Menaira would never be extinguished? It's a very simple question. And the premise of the question is the classic Torah premise, and that's the Torah Shabbat Sav, the written Torah, which is the Chumash, the five books, and the Torah Shabbat Peh, the oral Torah, um, works with the written Torah. They, they, they work together. So that's where the Midrash, the Zohar, the Kabbalah, the Midrashim, the Talmud, it all comes in. But they shtim, they work together. So how does it work? The Midrash, the oral Torah, says that the Menaira was lit from Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. But we find there's a commandment in the written Torah, in, in this week's Torah portion, to light it every single day. So how does it work? How do the two work together? In, in the classic Hebrew Yiddish word, we say, how does it shtim? Shtim means like, how does it, how do they coincide and work together in a conformity with each other? So I bring in the Sefer, on short and sweet on the parsha. I explain uh, that Rav Chaim Brisker answers this based on a halacha, based on a halacha, Jewish law. You can find it in the Rambam, the writings of Maimonides and other places. The halacha is that if a person adds oil, to an existing light on Shabbos, that person is chayiv, that person is liable for transgressing the prohibition of making a fire on Shabbos. In other words, the Torah says you can't make a fire on Shabbos. So you might have thought that is only being violated if you would make a, a brand new flame and add, uh, make a flame, a fire, add fuel to it, a brand new one. That would be a problem. So the Rambam brings the halacha, the Jewish law is that you would actually be breaking this prohibition if, let's say, there was an already existing flame and you would go pour oil or, or something else flammable on it to add fuel to that, okay? That would also be breaking the prohibition of kindling uh, a fire on Shabbos. Okay, so what do you see from here? So says Rav Chaim Brisker, you see from here, uh, halacha, and the halacha is that a person can affect a lighting, let's call it a lighting, by even adding a little oil 
to a pre-existing flame. So this is what he told the Imrayim. It's the same thing. That's exactly what happened in the Mishkan and the Holy Temple. Every day, a small amount of oil was added to the light that was already burning. And according to the Halacha, according to Jewish law, that would still qualify as a lighting and fulfill the mitzvah. So it was true, as the Midrash says, that the Menorah was lit from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. That is true. Ah, so how did people fulfill the mitzvah every single day? The answer is they would add a little a light, a little oil to the pre-existing and so far so good. Okay, so Ad Khan up to here, that's Rav Chaim Brisker, that's Imre Emes, that's the verse in this week's Torah portion, Titzave, and that's how we understand it. That's the Rambam, that's a Halacha. Okay, so far so good. So what do I want you to take away from here? In addition to the good Torah and understanding how the written Torah and oral Torah work together, I have a little bit more for you. And that is, and I write about this in my book, that the ethical takeaway you're supposed to cha- take from this exchange is that a person can affect a lighting by adding a little oil to a pre-existing flame. In other words... Even, and this is the ethical idea, because when we learn Taira, it's not just to collect information, which is true, but as much as we can, we try to glean those lessons that able, uh, able and enable and empower us to become the best version of ourselves that God knows we could be. That's a big part of why we learn Taira. So the answer is that even if we ourselves aren't able to do heroic, enormous acts of Torah, of mitzvah observance, of doing commandments, of inspiring others, great huge things, big charitable deeds. You know, even if we're not able to do huge things, and even if it might seem sometimes that our actions pale in comparison to the pre-existing good deeds in the world or the accomplishment of others, what you see from here in Musser, in, in the ethical takeaway, is that you can add a little mitzvah light to a pre-existing large flame, and it is still deemed precious to God. You follow what I'm trying to say? I don't know if I said it cleanly enough or sharply enough, but what you see from this conceptually is that since we see from these rulings that adding light, adding um, adding some fuel to a pre-existing flame is also a big deal. It's also It also is considered like it counts by God. It doesn't just count in the way of you did the wrong thing. For example, in the case of lighting... Uh, a flame on Shabbos in a case you wouldn't be allowed to. It also goes in the positive direction as well. If you So so what I want to ex- basically say, bottom line, 30-second version, is that in your day-to-day life, yeah, you know, you don't always have the time, the energy, the resource, the talent, the ability, the reach, whatever it may be, to do huge, enormous things to make this massive flame of goodness, kindness, charity, inspiration. You might not, but... If you can add to a flame that's already going on, that's a big deal. Yeah, you may not be able to give a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand or more to charity, but you can, can you give ten dollars to an institution that's already doing good? That's a big deal to God. That's a big deal to your soul. That's still a big deal. You know, maybe you don't have the ability to 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 make videos and put them on YouTube and Facebook and write books and inspire people. Yeah, you know, most people don't. But could you could you could you share something with somebody else? Could you repeat a good idea? Can you say a kind word to one person? If you don't have a distribution channel of fifty thousand people a week, can you can you hit the share button and share with somebody? What can you do to add fuel to even a pre-existing flame? Don't think it's nothing. Uh, it is still precious to God, and that is one of the themes that we learn out in this week's Torah portion. I hope that made sense to you. It uh, definitely made sense to me. That was from Short and Sweet on the Parsha, page 206-207. Uh, that's what it says over there, plus with my uh, my additions and uh, speaking it out always makes something shorter, a little bit longer. Uh, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network and BregmanSuccess.com. Please reach out to me if you want to connect. Send me an email, director at jeln.org. You can message me on Facebook, my page over there facebook.com forward slash Rabbi Bregman. And let's grow together and let's encourage each other and add fuel to each other's flames as powerfully and as much as we can. Because every little drop counts. Every drop counts. There are no small amounts when it comes to what things look like from God's perspective. Anyway, have a good Shabbos. Hope you enjoyed that. Be well. Bye-bye.